Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Monday to you all. Hopefully, you enjoyed your weekend and off to a good start on your weeks ahead. Of course, we are continuing checking out the recent Infinite comeback. Checked out the title track, New Emotions, which, you know, musically, I've really enjoyed the song. That bass line, very nice. Getting callbacks to some classic Infinite song composition choices. And now we have the rest of the EP to check out. The Begin EP, stylized with a 13 for 13 years of Infinite. It's going to be a good time. And um, I reckon we'll be in for quite a good time with the beat sides, considering all of them, apart from the intro track, are over three minutes long, which was the main gripe I had about New Emotions, the title track. So, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Just want... As long as they don't take away my final courses, I'm going to be okay. So, let's check this one out. I have album credits off of Genius on the side over here. We're going to be going over every single song. Well, we'll skip over New Emotion uh, because we've already listened to that. See the video for that somewhere. Uh, it'll be on the channel. And so, track number one on the album list. This is intro 13. Team, written by Blessed, who has worked on... Let's see what they've worked on in the past. Golcha! Golchild's Wannabe. Wannabe, Dream, Dada. Work with Sunkyu. Six Sense about Lovelies. Okay, so they must be a, uh, big in... Uh, have their hand in some Woolen discography stuff. That's very cool. Alright, intro 13. Here we go. Sun's up, or it's a lightning. Oh. Oh. Speed it up. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, if this intro kind of clip or intro song is supposed to be indicative of what the entire album is supposed to sound like, this album is going to be a trip. Whoa! Okay. I had no idea what direction this intro was going to go. And frankly, these intro songs are always really exciting because you never quite know how this became a song until you finish the album, right? Like, if this is supposed to be indicative of what the rest of the album is, we won't know until we finish the album. But the fact that we had, like, the really smooth, really slow opening, and then you have the very gradual accelerando, little speed up, the absolutely disgusting subwoofer required, like, brain rattler of... A dubstep drop just thrown in there all of a sudden. Like, I want to hear that on a proper car stereo with a subwoofer and everything and just feel how much that makes my spine rattle. Because that was, that was one of those EDM drops that really was a sucker punch to the face every time. And I'm not mad at it one bit. Oh, 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay, this is time difference. Um, off of initial reactions, uh, time difference uh, seemed to be the most well-received song on the album. So, let's check this one out. Written by Soju Won of Artmatic. Wido of Artmatic. Donghua, Never Know, and Ku Te Wu. Alright, let's let this song run real quick. Here we go. like the title track it's one of those songs that doesn't need a lot to get a lot done it's not loud it's not extreme like quick or like upbeat uh, it's got such a nice pace and nice beat behind it where the song does all the work Too. You got the quick beat with the drawn out top line. Mm. Ah, nice. I like it. A two stage increase. back there. And a bonafide outro. <laughs> Here's the thing. Already we have the classic infinite final chorus release infinite historically have been so good at their builds and releases and time differences essentially encapsulates everything that's great about how infinite is able to manipulate the energy of their song so like the song itself is not an extremely upbeat song it's not in your face. It's not super quick. Yet, the song, when you listen to it, has such a nice groove to it, has a such nice beat to it, that you can't help but kind of, like, move along to it. Even though it's a quite understated, like, song. It's not... No, it's not like... Uh, what's a good Infinite song? Use as an example. Nikohaja, like, you know, iconic chorus. Nikohaja, Nianasarange. Oh, like, you know, loud, impactful, almost anthemic like chorus. This song 
very, very minimal on the kind of flair and things like that until you get to the final chorus. And that is something that Infinite have done so well for so long. And we finally got it. This is the kind of release that we were robbed of in New Emotions. <sighs> also, looking at the credits, um, Ku Te Wu you know, worked on songs like uh, From Us 9's DM, uh, 127's Love on the Floor, um, Shiny's Drive. And then kind of everyone else says this is like their first genius inclusion, which is very cool. Nice. Okay, I got... You, uh, written by Blessed and Jill, Frederick Jill, Frederick Child. Uh, Love You Better by God7 is on their sonography. Uh, How We Do by Schumann. Nice. All right, let's send it one time. Here we go. <laughs> Again, with the really gentle introduction. Still minimal, no bottom end at all. And I love that immediately you know when some junk is singing, still, to this day. Oh, hello. The quick cadence on the hold there. A string section? I love the vocal chops in this too. It really works. Also, is this like the first proper rappers we've gotten on the album? I don't have to worry. Quack jab and I do something. That synth has is so good. And that whole, the musical silence is exquisite. There's the bridge. Bonafide ending. No, oh, actually, go back to that. Okay. And um, hold on a second. I got you. Um, once again, I wonder if that's going to be a general thing for this album. Is that kind of 
under, understated but packs a punch. Because that's the vibe I'm getting from this album so far. Like, across the board, all the songs have had a really good amount of, like, punch behind them. But are songs that aren't outwardly, like, loud and energetic. Which I quite like. It's very fitting for them, I think. Especially if they're kind of going for this refined, mature identity. I mean, I say mature, not like they've been in the industry for, you know, 13 years, but... You get my point, right? Like, it's... The way they're delivering the energy isn't as explicitly, like, clear as what they used to back in the day in, like, the early 2010s. And I like that. I really do like it. But man, are the synths really good and I got you. Like, the way they have such a nice... Ooh, I have the hiccups all of a sudden. Excuse me. The way the bounce and the beat comes across so cleanly once that synth kicks in in the chorus. I'm kind of amazed at how clear that comes across. This is a song, especially once you get the little string fills and the choruses, like, I don't typically go back on songs in almost since, but... Yes, I got you. No got in Like, this is a pretty high chorus. And high high chorus, high vocal usually means you get a decent amount of volume through it, but you still feel the bounce of that synth, and it is a nice, firm bounce. The B-sides have been fire on this album. Hold up. Now, one last song. I know there's six songs on the album, but technically the final song is the instrumental version of New Emotions. So we'll just... Finish with track number five, Find Me, written by J.K. St. Knox, Chrismatic, and Jung Yo Jin. Here we go. Rock ballad? It sounds like a rock ballad. God, the wailing guitar is such a cool sound. False drop. It's one of these songs, 100%. Flash, cell phone flashlights, light sticks in the air, waving back and forth very slowly. As a sucker for a good ballad, this gets a stamp of approval from me. Maybe we're gonna get another tease with the with the quiet drop, but nope.
okay, we get a bonafide outro. I'll let it slide. I wanted that, like, final vocal chorus one more cycle. But I'll, I'll take the little piano interlude to finish. <gasps> oh. As a big fan of the sappy ballad, I'm very happy with Find Me. It's very much a quintessential ballad, and I love it. And surprisingly, this is a song where instead of like the kind of sedate or like the subdued nature of the instrumental carries the song, this is purely a vocal powered song. I mean, like, even though you have like the wailing electric guitar and the piano and the you know nice firm power ballad release of the chorus, for me, it is the vocals that push this song forward. It is just from start to finish, just got such nice vocals. And, of course, final chorus. Let Infinite do a final chorus and you're gonna get that release. That, let's listen to that final chorus again because I just want to hear all of the vocals. In fact, the final chorus in Find Me get, officially gets my W vocals, also known as the Vocals Badge. <laughs> Because for me, I want you to pay attention. There's like at minimum three vocal parts. Top one. Oh. There's like two different vocals doing ad libs on top of the harm of harmony and the main vocal part. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <sighs> that makes me very happy. That makes me very happy indeed. You know, I've thought about this. Should I go and deep dive on my own some Infinite albums? Because of course, you know, they've been around for 13 years. There's a lot of music to check out from them. And it's like, I have the beginning of my adventure with Infinite, and I have the very end of my adventure with Infinite. I don't have the middle. It's like I read the first page and the back cover on a book. I don't have the meat of the story. So I wonder. I wonder how much music I've missed out on. Now, when it comes to title tracks, I reckon I'll find out whenever that Killing Voice draws because I have a sneaking suspicion I'm probably not going to know some of the title tracks. As, like, as big of a group Infinite was, I reckon I'm probably going to miss a few of the title tracks, and that'll be kind of like the gauge as to how much Infinite I still need to catch up on. But all in all, I'm very happy with this. This is kind of like a nostalgia fueled moment for me in the way that again like infinite were my first ever k-pop group and they were a group that i figured i would never be able to listen to a new release from and this is strangely enough the second group that i've run into this experience with the first one was kara last year because i love kara's music and i didn't think we would ever get a group release from them but then they dropped When I Move and that whole EP last year. And Kara were back. Same with Infinite. I thought we would never get, I would never be able to experience a new Infinite release. Especially after they didn't re-sign with Woolen. And now here we are. An Infinite comeback. I wonder who's going to be next from 2nd Gen to have a big old comeback like this. An anniversary comeback. As we've had a couple groups this year from 2nd Gen have a release like this. So I wonder who's going to be next. I wonder. But, anyways, that's enough rambling for me today. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request for me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be, you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day-to-day. -day. Know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. 
So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.